All right, Shalom. I want to begin the lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, Waha Raka Kwadash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sense of brethren out there that's also laboring in his work. And as always, want to say shalom to the believers. You know, the Akim as well as the Akwath, which will be your brothers as well as your sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So yeah, just wanted to go into another quick lesson in which in this sitting right here is always the focal point being Bible prophecy, which features the downfall, collapse, and utter destruction of this place, America, which is also known as spiritually Egypt, Assyria, Nineveh, and most notable, Babylon the Great. So in essence, the motivation behind prophecy going forth was to condemn the so-called white man. And that's pursuant to the book of Ezekiel, the 35th chapter, where we was commanded to set our face against Mount Seir and to prophesy against it. And due to the evil titans, such as the projected famine, you have civil war on the horizon, projected blackouts, and ultimately a third world war approaching, who can but prophesy against this place? And the mere fact that the so-called white man is in power is proof that that destruction is a reality. Matter of fact, let's begin real quick right here. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, the 10th chapter, in the third verse, and it reads, An unwise king destroyeth his people. An unwise king destroyeth his people. But through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, An unwise king destroyeth his people, in which Esau, the so-called white man, is indeed an unwise king. Anyone who figures out a way to destroy the air, the water that you consume, under this man's watch, the food is referred to as genetically modified, genetically modified organisms. <laughs> that sounds like a damn sci-fi flick. Under this man's watch, you have animals at the brink of extinction. This man has single-handedly disrupted the ecosystem. You have trash flowing around the atmosphere. More people have died under the banner of his health care system. Just let that sink in. What should be considered an institution for health is actually destroying you. And we can go on and on as touching the many offenses of Esau, the so-called white man, which ultimately proves him to be unwise. Matter of fact, let me grab something real quick, and we're going to come back here. Right here in the book of Job, the 30th chapter, in the 8th verse, and it reads, They were children of fools, and this is concerning the so-called white men. And why are they considered children of fools? Because their forefather and progenitor, Esau, pretty much gave over, he sold his birthright, for a pot of stew. So this contribute to the so-called white man being children of fools. Again, it says, they were children of fools. Yeah, children of base men. Children of base men, they were viler than the earth. They were viler than the earth. In which that vileness, if you will, is manifest through the so-called white man. That's why you have a LGBTQ community, which is nothing more than the tip of the iceberg as touching the perverseness of Esau, the so-called white man. But again, the point here is that they're referred to as fools. And again, exhibit A, the planet Earth. Just look at the condition of the planet Earth, which was created to be a paradise, yet the so-called white man single-handedly brought it to ruins. This man figured out a way to bring paradise into hell 
Well, this also contributes to this man being a fool. You see? So when you go back here again to the book of Ecclesiasticus, the 10th chapter, and again, the third verse, it reads, an unwise king destroyeth his people. See? An unwise king destroyeth his people. So obviously you see the people destroyed under the watch of the so-called white man. But ultimately, that destruction will be manifest in the form of World War III, in which the stage is set. Why? Because an unwise king is in power. Again, the mere fact that the so-called white man is in power is proof that that destruction is looming. Matter of fact, let me grab something else real quick before we get into this lesson. Right here in the book of Proverbs, the 29th chapter, in the second verse. And it reads, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, which this is the case, the wicked is bearing rule. Again, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. The people mourn. And again, that's the current state here on the planet Earth. All of creation is in mourning under this man's watch. But ultimately, the people will mourn due to the destruction that's prepared to lay hold of this place of America, Babylon the Great. And again, what's the catalyst to that destruction and the people overall mourning? The fact that the wicked is barren rule. So again, the so-called white man being in power is proof that a destruction is coming. Matter of fact, let's go there. This is the book of Proverbs, the 16th chapter, in the 18th verse, and it reads, Pride goeth before destruction, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, Pride goeth before destruction. And again, you see here where the scriptures emphasize a destruction, which for those of us in the know, we understand that this destruction will be manifest through World War III. But again, what's going to assure this destruction? What would be the segue, if you will, to this destruction? Pride, which is clearly on display under the watch of Esau, the so-called white man. You have what's known as the Pride Community, which is honored in the form of Pride Month. You have the slogan, Proud to be an American. Well, that's all spiritual. When you consider these service academies, and in particular the Marines, where well, one of the slogans as touching a recruiting pitch is the few, the proud, the Marines, which gives you a glimpse into the true nature of Esau, the so-called white man, in relation to his pride. Now, with that established, that pride actually emanates from the fact that this man truly believed that he would not be moved. He believed that his destiny lie in his own hands. Pretty much this man suffer from what's known as delusion of grandeur. Now to get a better feel for this concept, let's pull up this phrase, delusion of grandeur. Yeah, and the source would be from the Wikipedia and it reads, grandose delusions also known as delusions of grandeur or expansive delusions. It reads, are a subtype of delusion characterized by extraordinary belief that one is famous, omnipotent, omnipotent, let's click on this word, omnipotent, omnipotence, the quality of having unlimited power, the quality of having unlimited power. You see, so it says, Subtype of delusion characterized by extraordinary belief that one is famous, omnipotent, or having an unlimited range of power, if you will, wealthy, or otherwise very powerful. Now, Esau does have power because he occupied a power seat, but that power was given him. So if that's the case, this means it can be taken away. So in reality, the so-called white man 
suffers from delusion of grandeur because, again, he believed that his power is generated by his military prowess, his technology, and his overall tenacity and desire to rule. This man believed that just because he have been exalted, he have the jurisdiction to retain that power, when the fact of the matter is that power was given him. And again, if this is the case, if it was given him, this would mean that it can and will be taken from him. Which brings me right here to the book of Isaiah, the 10th chapter and the 15th verse. And it reads, Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up. As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up. Or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood. Now, what we're reading right here is a dark saying, if you will, concerning Esau, the so-called white man, and his power, which was given him. Again, it reads, Shall the axe boast itself against him that heareth therewith? So an axe can't boast himself against the very one that lifted up and giveth his power. An axe, as menacing as an axe might be, is rendered useless unless someone actually lift it up and give it power. See? It goes on to say, or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? So a saw is nothing unless someone shake it, you see, and give it power. It says, as if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up. So a rod must be lift up. A rod can lift itself up, although a rod is a weapon, if you will. And if you notice, this axe, this saw, this rod, this staff would be considered weapons in which all these things pretty much round off to the sword. So again, as menacing as a weapon or a sword, you can have an assault rifle, which is a menacing weapon. Well, again, it's rendered useless unless someone lift it up and give it its power. Again, it says, as if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff shall lift up itself as if it were no wood. So Esau is nothing more than an object which had to be given power. And who gave him his power? Our power, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. So y'all just wanted to touch on that. Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say Shalom.